Okay, so let's try number 4E in 1.2. This is solve an IBP, and unless you were on the ball with the homework, you probably haven't seen, well, let me scratch that. You definitely haven't seen me solve an IBP yet. Okay. So an initial value problem just is a differential equation with some conditions that need to be satisfied. These conditions will let you find the constants that might appear. Like that's what their purpose is. So is this is this telling us to pick one of the curves out of the infinite number of curves? Yes. Okay. So this differential equation describes some kind of slope field, right? If you drop a starting point and a starting velocity in that slope field, there is some kind of predetermined path that will take you through the, that universe, right? These are telling you what the starting point and starting velocity are. Does that make sense? Do you need to do it for y and y prime, or could you just do it for y and then? No. You, you will need a both because this is a second order differential equation. Do you guys all see that this is second order? Why is it second order? Because there's a second order. Cool. All right. So we don't actually really know many tools for solving differential equations except what we know in Calc 1 or 2, right? So this thing is a Calc 2 level problem. This is saying, hey, you took a second derivative and you got x e to the x squared. What did you differentiate? So it seems like probably I start with y double prime is x e to the 2x. And I think to myself, if I want to get out of differentiating, what do I do? Integrate. Integrate, right? OK, so I'm going to integrate both sides. Slap a de eater on there. You guys probably haven't heard that one. This thing is a squiggly guy that eats the d's off of stuff, right? <laughs> Like, all it does is undifferentiate, right? So here we can think about this as, this is dy prime dx, right? And this thing's going to eat that d. Well, really, I need to integrate dx, right? So I'm going to integrate this side dx. Yeah? yeah so the dy is a whole bunch of things. Or in that location, you could so, yeah, I'm kind of cheating here, right? If I want f prime, right, another way to write f prime would be to write df dx. You guys see that? And I mixed notations here, because I want y double prime. So I took y prime and then differentiated with respect to x. You guys with me on that? And the reason I did that was just that I wanted to highlight this kind of stupid trick. And the stupid trick is these guys cancel. And this thing eats the d. So you get y prime on this thing. Or you could reason your way through the chain rule, like, which is re what's really going on, right? You're really using the chain rule to say that the antiderivative of a second derivative should be the first derivative. Done. On this side, what do you get? How do you integrate that thing? Parts. 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 Okay, so how do you do integration by parts again? You guys remember? Integral u d v. Okay, so you need to look at this guy and think to yourself, okay, so there's a u and a d v. Is this how you guys set this up? No? No. Ish? What do you use? I did the same thing. Good man. <laughs> the rest you all learn to set up integration by parts this way. No, I'm just kidding. Set up integration by parts however you want. Uh, which is the function you want to differentiate here? X. Probably x. So what's du then? 1 dx. 1 dx. OK, what's the function you want to integrate here? E to the 2x. You don't really want to integrate e to the 2x, right? But you kind of have to. So what's v? e to the 2x over 2. I'm down with that. Cool. OK, so then how does integration by parts work? Like thinking the integral of udv is uv minus integral of vdu. 
integral of the e. Nice. Good memory, guys. Okay, so y prime then, I'm going to need more space on here. y prime then should be uv. What's uv? x e to the 2x over 2. x e to the 2x over 2 minus the integral of v du. What's v du? e to the 2x over 2 d uh, u, which is 1 dx, right? So dx. Is with me on that? OK, so let me simplify a little bit. I think I got x e to the 2x over 2. Um, how do you do that one? Take out the half. Perfect. Take out the half. And then? Integrate. Yeah, do you use substitution again, or notice that's something you integrated over there, right? Yeah. So you get minus 1 over 2, what? 1 half e to the 2x over 2 again. Right? No. Plus constant. Um, I'm going to call that constant c1. Let me plug it back in for y prime, right? Or y prime of zero? Sure, you could do that at this stage if you wanted to. You see that? You could certainly use one of your initial conditions, which was they told me that y prime at zero should be one. If this thing's supposed to be y prime, then if I plug zero in, I should get one out. That would tell me that c1 is in fact. Yeah, so this piece will be zero, that'll be minus a quarter, and that'll be C1, right? So you can figure this out. I'm not going to right now. I'll figure it out at the end. Cool? Okay, that's Y prime. What's Y, y then? How do I get Y? Integrate that. Integrate that. Okay, which seems like it's going to be a giant mess, right? Like Y should be the antiderivative of... Oh, I can pull the half out of the first thing. So I got x e to the 2x, right? Yeah. dx minus a quarter, the integral of e to the 2x, dx, plus c1, the integral of 1, dx. You guys all with me on that? Okay, and then my claim would be that this is actually easy. You already did half of it. Because yeah. you already did, I think, all of it, actually. Uh, maybe not all of it. I don't think we integrated one yet today, but I think we can probably get that one. So I got one half, and then where did I integrate x e to the 2x? Yeah, that was kind of my very first thing, right? That was my first integration by parts thing. So I got the integral of x e to the 2x. I did integration by parts to it, and I got to here. You guys see that? So don't redo that. Just copy it down. Stick it in there. So I got 1 half, and then I need parentheses, and I got an x e to the 2x over 2 minus a quarter e to the 2x plus, uh-oh. Yeah, careful. That should be a different constant. You guys all with that? Okay. Now what? So now I got a minus quarter, right? And now I need to integrate e to the 2x again. How many times have I done that already? Like two or three? So that should be a e to the 2x over 2, right? What did you forget? Constant. Yeah, there's a constant, right? But you already have one arbitrary constant in here. You probably don't need a second. Let's pull that? Yeah. 
Then here, what do I have? C1x plus another constant that can also go into C2. You guys cool with that? Why didn't I absorb the C1 and the C2 together? Yeah, because they're, they're different levels is maybe the best explanation, right? That first constant came from that first integral. This second constant is just the constant that's coming from integrating again. You should have as many constants as you've done integrals, right? That kind of help you keep track? Okay, now I should figure out how to solve my initial value problem. So, what do I need to solve my initial value problem? This thing, by the way, here I have y of x, right? This whole dude here, what's that thing? This is one of the solutions, right? Yeah. Specifically, this is the, what's the best solution, the kind of worldwide one? Yeah, this is the general solution. Okay, and now I'm looking for a specific solution that satisfies the initial value problem. Right? So to get that, I need to plug the numbers from my initial values into their respective appropriate places and solve for constant. So which one do you go for first? The y is two unknowns in one equation right now. Yeah, you guys see that? There's C1 and C2 in Y, right? I really would prefer to get rid of one of those constants. So go to the deepest level, and it helps to keep your stuff around, right? Because I still know what Y prime is. It's over there. So I'm just going to use that. Otherwise, you'd have to differentiate this again, which would be a giant waste of time, right? Okay, so I got, I think, Y prime, I'm supposed to evaluate Y prime where? Zero. At zero? And what do you get if you plug zero into that? Um, you get zero, zero minus, minus a quarter. E to the zero is one, one plus C1. C1. And what's Y prime at zero supposed to actually be? Zero. It's supposed to be one. So what you found out is that C1 is 5.25. C1 is 5 fourths. Nice. What do you do with that information? Plug it into Y. Plug it into Y, right? So your particular solution has a C1 is 5 fourths. Yeah? So now I know YP, well, ish. <laughs> Y pish. Right? I would like to call this YP, like my particular solution that works. But it's not going to be the particular solution that works because it still has one of the constants in it. You guys see that? This is like my less general solution or something. So my YP of X is that whole shebang with a five quarters in it. Right? So one half got minus one quarter e to two x over two plus five quarters x. You guys all with me on that? Okay. Now I really should plug zero in, right? Why should I plug zero in? Yeah, I need to find C two, right? So what did they tell me? What am I using? Yeah, they told me y of 0 is 7, right? Okay, so I'm going to go like, okay, so y of 0 is that thing evaluated at 0, right? So that's 1 half, and then the first term there is 0, zero minus 1 quarter. plus C2, apparently, minus 
a <coughs> times 1, right? Plus 5 fourths times, times 0 is 0. zero. OK, so all told here, I got minus an eighth plus C2 over 2 minus an eighth is apparently 7. Where did the 7 come from? Uh, yeah, that was the value I was supposed to get by evaluating y of 0, right? So all told here, I think I got minus a quarter plus C2 over 2 equals 7. So C2 is 29 quarters times 2, maybe? 29 halves, give or take? 14 and a half. What? I said 14 and a half. Perfect. Cool. I was scared that I had done something wrong. So what do I do with this? Now you have your Y. Yeah, now I have my Y. Kind of, right? So I need that particular solution, right? So to write down the particular solution, I go like this. I go yp of x is, and then I need all that stuff. So I got 1 half x e to the 2x over 2 minus a quarter e to the 2x plus 29 over 2 minus e to the 2x over 8 plus 5 quarters x. Cool. Questions, Steele? Problems, complaints about arithmetic? Do you necessarily have to multiply the c2 by 1 half? Necessarily have to multiply the c2 by 1 half. Like the book made the point to just simplify arbitrary constants. Yeah, well my, well my question was, they got rid of that x. I think they for got an rid initial of value, x. for an initial in the, value in the, problem. In the final y, they didn't have yeah. five fourths. So you're just going to have a number. That's just a typo. Another one? No, really? I mean, the back of the book, it's just 29 Sorry, dude. Get what you price. pay for. <laughs> yeah, it's all right. <laughs> Um, yeah, so that sounds like a type of They lost the X. Uh, the reason I the reason I can tell you kind of unequiv unequivocally that should be a typo is that that should be der first derivative information, right? That thing should stick around after you take a derivative. If it doesn't have an X on it, guess where it's not going to be? It's not going to be in the derivative, right? Yeah, so certainly you could rearrange this a little bit. Like this is up to algebraic rearrangement. You could, you would still get the same thing up to algebraic rearrangement. Pretty cool. We don't know that yet, actually. I'm kind of saying that's true, but you have no reason to believe me. Um, there's a thing called an existence and uniqueness theorem that we'll see in chapter two that will tell you that whatever you get here is unique up to rearrangement. Of algebra. Okay. But that's not in particular obvious right now. It won't be obvious then either. I'll just say those words. <laughs> cool?